where your head at? Dang, don't wanna talk business, business. I guess I gotta be the one to see the summer. Who really in this, in this? We so fed up. My life, 10 up. Yo, time, been up. Big prayers, sent up. Uh, couldn't do without them, out of them. Uh, glad that I found them, found them. Uh, crowd really wild, wild. Uh, I'm kicking it, shining, shining. Good morning, Anthem. What's going on, everybody? Hey, if we've never, can we get the house lights up a little bit? I love to see beautiful faces. I love to see faces. There we go. If we haven't met before, my name is Kevin Abanez. I am the Next Steps pastor at this amazing church, and I want to thank, yeah, I want, I want to be thankful for that opportunity to um, not only be to be one of your pastors, but to um, also get to, to speak this morning. It's been a blast. It's been a crazy week. Anyone have a, a, a kind of a crazy week this past week with Thanksgiving, traveling, uh, maybe any of you got a little sick this week, you know what I'm talking about? It's been going around, and so um, I'm just so fired up to be here this morning and to speak to you guys this morning, and we're going to be looking at the third week of this Chasing Carrot series, and, and um, Chase asked me to speak on perfectionism, and so if any of you, I, I don't know, how many of you out there struggle with perfectionism? Any of you out there? A couple of you, two, three, four, okay. I would say like most of us in, a, in different ways, right? We're going to be talking about that in a little while. In the meantime, I'm going to encourage you to, to turn in your Bibles or your Bibles apps to Matthew chapter 5. That's where we're going to be at this morning. But we're going to talk about the imperfect pursuit of perfectionism. So most of us, I would say, would consider ourselves perfectionists in some way. But it's interesting. When, when someone else messes up or when our children or family or friends mess up, we're usually pretty good about extending grace, Right? Finish this little set saying with me, right? It's okay. Nobody is what? Perfect, right? You know, we extend that grace. But what happens when we mess up? Any of you kind of beat yourself up a little bit? You're, you're a little hard on yourself. You have that struggle. I do. Like I have, I, I am a perfectionist in my own way. Not, not in every way, but, and we all have this struggle inside of us. And, and we're usually critical and harshest on ourselves. But it's interesting. In Matthew 5, 48, I'm going to read this verse to you right now, and I want you guys to, to just, it's up on the screen, right? It's going to come up here, right? All right, so, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So you read that verse, and you go, perfect. Are you serious, God? You want me to be perfect, Jesus? And so don't worry, I'm going to unpack that in a little bit. But I wanted to look at some pictures here of the like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but have you started decorating yet for Christmas? Any of you? A few of you? You guys are on the ball. Good job. Gold star for you. We haven't yet. And part of it is because, you know, we've been battling illness and traveling and all that. But I wanted to show some pictures here of, of the perfect holiday home. Well, in my opinion, it's perfect holiday home. Can we get that picture up here? Uh, no, that's, that's the perfect family, all right? So <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, how many of you guys have tried to pose your kids and your family to have that perfect picture? Have you, have, have you done that before? We've done that, and it's a struggle because I don't know if you guys know this, but there's always that one kid, right, who has kind of looking over here and just kind of funky picture. Right? So that's what we I, ideally hope to see happen. But in reality, go back to the, uh, the other family, the next one. This is what kind of happens, right? You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? Like there's always, a, right? You guys get this, especially if you have littles. You know, it's such a struggle to get that perfectly dialed in picture. And then we want to decorate our house. So let's go to that perfectly, you know, you know, home decor. Look at that. Isn't that, that beautiful? Like, oh my gosh, right? You know, and that's like our ideal home. And some of you out there have the gift of, of Martha Stewart. And you know, and that's you and you can do that. But the majority of us are like this, at least our family. Can we go to the next picture? It's more like this, you know, balls on the ground, kids jumping around the dog, you know, it's, it's, is that more like reality for most of us? At least it is for us, you know. And, and in the midst of this, I really feel for the ladies in the room, right? Why? Because the ladies in the room feel this pressure more than us guys. Let's be real, right, guys? Like, right, what do we have to do? Take out, you know, show up, that's it, right? Show up. Who said that? You're so right. Like, most of the time, guys, what do we get to do? Maybe hang up the Christmas tree lights outside and do that kind of stuff. And the interior of the house, that's, a, that's the way it is at our house. My wife takes care of all that stuff. And, and so in the midst of that, the, the, our, the house has to look good. And, and you know, the 
kids still need to go to school, and there's music and sports lessons that are still happening, right? Because school's still happening. It's December. We're not done quite yet. And, and we still have Christmas crafts to plan, right, ladies, right? And then there's these elaborately themed, you know, cookie and snack and dessert parties that are thrown. I don't know how you guys do that. And then you still got to plan for Christmas, you know, dessert and meals and, and shop for that. And, and never mind shopping, right? You still got to shop for what? All the presents, right? And you have to shop for the presents for your family and usually your husband's family. And what do us guys, who do we have to normally just shop for? Your wife. And, and, and bonus if you shop for your mom, right? But that's about it, you know? But, and that's really where we fall into it. And in the middle of all that, kids still need to be fed. And, and there needs to be, you know, and of course they have to be organic kale and, and carrots, right? You know, <laughs> not, not Oreos and donuts like the kids really want, right? And, and so, you know, there's songs and baths and stories and all that. <sighs> it's exhausting, right? Anyone else exhausted? I'm just exhausted saying all that. Seriously. And, and, and through all that, there's a spirit of perfectionism that we put this pressure on ourselves. And I don't think it's just only a mom or a wife problem. I think it's an all of us problem. Amen? Like, I mean, I think it, it's something that we all struggle with and we have these unrealistic expectations of ourselves in these circumstances. And there's this dichotomy that we think that in order us, for us to do well in life, in, in our careers, let's say, then we have to let the house and, and our family life suffer or vice versa. If we want to do well at our home, we got to let our career suffer. And I think that this is that stress that we feel, especially during this holiday season. And, and, and it causes us to start focusing on so many different things and we become ineffective and inefficient. And, and I think that the tendency for us also, like I said, is to be those perfectionistic type mentality and have that kind of thinking. And so I want to look at three types of perfectionists. If you have your, your notes, I'm going to encourage you to fill this in. First of all, there's the self-oriented perfectionist. And I'm going to read a little description of what those are and see if this is you, all right? So you hold um, unrealistically high expectations of yourself and you battle with feelings of guilt often obsessing to the point of inefficiency. Is it ringing true for some of us, right? If this describes you, you're prone to procrastinate and you struggle with deep feelings of inadequacy. It's the self-oriented perfectionist who thinks, I've got to live up to my own standards of perfection or I don't want to do it because if I don't hit the standard, I feel ashamed or guilty. All right, so that's the self-oriented perfectionist. Second type of perfectionist is this. The externally oriented or other oriented perfectionist. What this is, is you believe others expect you to be perfect. Some of you are like, oh, that's me, right? You believe and you cope with the pressure and you often do use self-deprecating humor as a defense. You might make fun of your work ethic or your appearance and you often feel alone, depressed, and secretly desperate because you know no matter how hard you try, you will never measure up. You'll never live up to the idea of what others expect of you. So that's the externally or other-oriented perfectionist. And then the third type of perfectionist is this, the others-oriented or socially prescribed perfectionist. What this is, is you impose your expectations on others, and you expect them to live up to your impossible standards. And because you tend to lack empathy, you often tear down others or use abrasive or demeaning humor toward those who meet your don't meet your standards. Sometimes this comes out as drill parent, drill sergeant parroting. You know what I'm talking about? The parent who just like order, order, order. And some of us have kind of grew up in that kind of lifestyle or with parents like that. Or some of us might even have that kind of parenting. And if you recognize yourself in any of these categories, which I think most of us probably do, sadly, um, what I want to talk about today is how do we deal with this? Because I believe there's a spiritual component to this. It's not just psychological, which that's important, but ultimately it's a theological. It's a belief issue in our hearts. Because perfectionism, I believe, is a mask or a covering for our deepest insecurities and fears. It's a covering, ultimately, for our sin. And, and it what happens is we need to let God ultimately deal with this problem in our hearts. I'm going to illustrate. So back in Genesis chapter 3, some of you remember Adam and Eve. You guys remember Adam and Eve, right? When they were in the Garden of Eden, this was pre-fall, pre-sin, 
They were just living life freely, casually, right? There was no pressure. But sin entered. And when that happened, something terrible, terrible happened. And what did they do? They sewed together fig leaves to cover over their sin and their shame and their nakedness. And this covering was a covering really for that imperfection, that inadequacy, that sin that they felt in their hearts. And that covering, that imperfection, is, is the struggle, I believe, that we all have. It's the sin issue in our hearts. And so the root, if since the root of this perfectionism is a sin issue, a spiritual problem, then God alone can truly transform and change us. And so what I want to show you this morning is clearly how we can handle this problem, not by ourselves, because that's our tendency, but with God's help. Amen? That's who has to deal with this issue in our hearts. Look, look at Romans chapter 3. I'm going to read this verse to you, verse 20. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. See, on our, on our own, we cannot be perfect enough for God. So take the pressure off right now. You and I cannot be perfect enough for God. And the question is, why do we have the law? Why did God give us this law? Look at verse 20 once again. Through the law, we become conscious of our sins so that we can know our sin. The law shows us how sinful we are and reveals the reality that we need help. Can anyone else agree with that? You need help? I do, right? I mean, we all need God's help. We cannot handle this sin problem on our own. We need God's grace. What is grace? It's getting God's goodness and forgiveness and having a relationship with him and having this gift of salvation and mercy all because of what Christ did for us on the cross. That's grace. That's what we get to live in if we place our faith in him. We also get God's mercy, which is God not punishing us for the sins that we commit on a daily basis, right? Anyone sin on a daily basis? I know I do, right? And so we need to walk in not only grace, but in God's mercy. But I want you to go back with me in time a little bit and think about the Pharisees. Who's heard of the Pharisees? These were the Jewish religious leaders of Jesus' this time. And they came up with, listen to this, and this was part of, in Scripture as well, they had 613 laws to keep. Let that sink in for a second. 613. Are you kidding me? Try to keep all of those laws. And, and most of us know the 10 biggies, right? The 10 commandments. And how do we do with just keeping those 10? Right? Let's go through them really quickly, right? right? So how many of you struggle with having other gods before God? Mm, I don't know. I failed on that one. How about making idols? Fail, right? How about taking the name of the Lord your God in vain or as a swear word? If you've, maybe you did that in your past life, right? You know, we've, we've all been there, done that, right? How about um, remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Mm, that's a big one, right? We've, we've worked on that Sabbath day. How about this? We've honored our parents or rather dishonored our parents, right? I mean, we've, we've, this is one that we're like, Pastor, I, I know I haven't failed on this one. You shall not murder, right? I've not murdered, but what did Jesus say? If you've hated somebody in your heart, what have you done? You've murdered them too. Here's another one. Oh, committing adultery. I have been faithful to my spouse. Have you had an impure thought about another person? You failed too. I failed as well, right? Stealing, failed. Do not lie, failed. Coveting, failed. So we failed all of these. There's no way we can live up to God's standard of perfection. That's where grace comes in. And it's hard for us because most of us want to say this. Come on, Kevin. I'm generally, generally a pretty good person. You know, I pay my taxes. You know, I, I'm nice to, to children and puppies. You know, I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, you know, I recycle. I reduce my carbon footprint, right? You know, I do all those things. And, and are those good things? Yes, of course. You know, I go to church. You know, I tithe, I serve, I do all these things. But ultimately, it's not about that. It's walking in God's what? His grace. His grace. And the reality is we need to, to just be honest and real with where we're at. That we are messed up, jacked up sinners. Welcome to Anthem Church, the feel-good church, right? That's just reality where we need to be. We need, I need Jesus, because the heart is deceitful, right? Our hearts fool us into thinking we're pretty good people. 
But how are we made right with God? Romans 3.22. It's up on the screen. It says, we are made right with God, listen, by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone, everyone who believes, no matter who we are. That's good news. Amen? No matter who you are, if you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you are in the family of God. You are walking in his grace. You are a child of God. Yeah, you can clap for that. Amen for that, right? And, and the, the challenge is this. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of math, right? So I'm like, oh, math, pastor. No, that's too early. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Can you guys remember that? Jesus plus nothing equals everything. What do I mean by that? See, what we tend to do as humans and as, as religious people is think that if we do all these good works, if we do all these things, like I mentioned earlier, we come to church faithfully, you know, we give, we tithe, we serve, you know, we go to life group, which all of you should be in, right? You know, we do all these things. Somehow, God will love us more. Is that true? No. God loves every single one of you so much. Amen? That's good news. We don't have to walk, in the, uh, walk on eggshells and try to earn God's love and favor. See, it's not about perfectionism. It's grace. I'm going to say that again because I think that might be a word for someone in here this morning. It's not about perfectionism. It's about grace. And I love that one of anthems, one of our values here is that we are a place of grace. Amen? A place of grace that God has poured out his love on us, his grace. And I want to show you guys a, a quick chart here about perfectionism and grace, right? So perfectionism is about what I do, what I do, somehow to earn God's favor or to earn other people's favor. But grace is really about what Jesus has done for us. See, it's not about us, it's about Jesus, right? Secondly, we think about this, that perfectionism is about me. Once again, my working, my earning. My being the hamster on the wheel, right, trying to do more for God. And no, it's really always about Jesus. Thirdly, it's, we think, wait, if I obey God, he will love me more. No, we've got to remember this because God loves us. We get to live from that love. We can obey freely. We love because he first loved us. And we can win. We can try to win God's approval, and that's, once again, perfectionism. But living from God's approval is where we need to be at. Because it is by grace that we have been saved through faith, not of ourselves, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. So I really want us to walk away with this idea that because of this grace, I want to say this right now to every single one of us, the pressure is off. And everyone should just sigh in relief right now, right? the pressure is off. You don't have to perform. You don't have to do all these things. You get to embrace the grace of God. You get to step into his goodness and walk in his perfect love for you. You don't have to live up to these standards that the world puts on us or that we put on ourselves because, once again, we walk in his love and his grace. And I think that's a word for us this morning, especially, like I said, as we enter into this Christmas season, right, where everything has to be just right and just perfect. No, walk in God's love and grace. Don't miss that. And so I want us to have, th th just think about these things. I'm going to give you three points of application, and then I'm done. Number one, how can we apply this? How can we use this? First of all, and, and here's my heart, too, before I get into this, I really hope and pray that this hits your heart, not just your head, but your heart, so that your lives will be impacted and changed this week. So number one, we need to choose people over perfection. Choose people over perfection. I think that's so important. Um, because the pressure is off, we get to choose this. We get to choose intimacy and friendship and depth of relationship with people instead of performing and trying to live up to this perfect standard. We're chasing the carrot. We're trying to look this way and act this way and have the perfect home and perfect life. No, just remove yourself from that pressure. 
and, and think about this. I mean, we just came off of Thanksgiving. How many of you guys had a good Thanksgiving? We had an amazing Thanksgiving. 31 of us in my sister-in-law's house. It was a blast. Two turkeys, ham, pot roast, the whole nine, right? I had 4,000 calories. Anyone else? Like, you know what I mean? It was just a crazy, crazy day. And, and, and it's definitely the most, um, I would say, the most, like, like works-oriented holiday, right? Like, there's so much to do. And, and I want to illustrate this with the story of Mary and Martha, right? You guys, how many of you know the story of Mary and Martha? Some of you know, some of you don't. I'm going to give you the quick version of this. So Mary and Martha are a pair of sisters who are friends with Jesus. And Jesus is coming over to their house. Think about that. Jesus, the God of this universe, the king of all creation, their Lord, their Savior, is coming to their house. Imagine if Jesus was coming to your house. Talk about pressure, right? You know? And so what does Martha do? She's all about the details and getting all the cushions right on the sofa, right? And making sure everything looks beautiful and perfect. And what is Mary doing? Does anyone remember what Mary's doing? She's just lazily sitting at the feet of Jesus, just soaking it in. And, and I love Martha because she's like, Jesus, tell, your sis- tell my sister to get off of her blessed assurance and get over here and help me, <laughs> Right? And, and really, that's, and that's so us, many of us, right, where we are trying so much to try to impress and have everything dialed in. And what did Jesus say? Luke 10, 41 and 42, in the New Living, I love how the New Living puts this, says this. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Martha, and I think that's some of us, Martha's, including myself, we need to choose people over perfection. Take the pressure off. And see, this was us. Andrea and I, years ago, we kind of made this decision. Some of you know this. We have four kids, and, and we homeschooled. We home educated our kids for eight years. And so we were trying to beat ourselves up and have our house all dialed in every time people came over. And we finally said, you know what? We're going to just whatever. We're going to do our best. And, and so, and even to this day, if you come to our house, you'll notice this. If some of you guys have been to our house before, some of you guys know this. Our house is not perfectly, you know, Martha Stewart, you know, or everything in perfect order and all the cushions are just right. We do our best, you know, we try to clean the bathroom and wipe down the counters and, you know, make sure the socks are off the floor, you know, and all that. But the reality is we've chosen to say, you know what, we're going to choose people over perfection. We want you to come to our house and just enjoy being loved on, enjoy the relationship, not worry, because the reality is you don't care about that stuff anyway, right? At least I hope you don't, right? You know, that's the reality, right? You don't. You don't, you, you want that relationship, and that's what we want. We want to have that with, with people. And so we've chosen to let that go, to take the pressure off. And that might be a word for some of us this Christmas season, take that pressure off. Secondly, you need to choose love over performance. Choose love over performance. See, God's perfect love overcomes our imperfect performance. Because the reality is, none of us, none of us is perfect. Me, most of all. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This, is, this one was the one that hit me the hardest. You don't have to be perfect. But, but hold on. Didn't I just read, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect? Didn't, didn't we just read that? I mean, I, read, I did that on purpose. Bible scholars out there, you know this. Context. Context is so important. I read that verse out of context so that we can read it right now in context and you can understand it. So Matthew 5, listen, Matthew 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount, is not about performance. That section of scripture, Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Let me read that to you, Matthew 5, 43 to 48. So Jesus said this, You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you, may have, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the, evil and, on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? 
Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet your only, you, only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So what is Jesus talking about here? He's talking about his perfected love. He's talking about love four times in that little section of Scripture. It says, love, love, love. And that word perfect is the Greek word teleos. And that word means to be mature, to be complete, not to be perfect in the sense of flawless. Does that make sense? To mature, to get to that place. And that's the reality because think about this. An eight-year-old is maturing. They're not quite there yet, but a 24-year-old is, right? And so they're teleos. They're maturing. They're getting more mature physically. And that's how we are to be spiritually. We are to love others freely like Christ loved us, and we mature into that love. And Jesus, the personification of love and grace, told his disciples, and he's telling you and me to be perfect in our love, meaning be mature and perfected in our love as we get to that place. Because ultimately, remember this, it's not about our performance, it's about who? Jesus and what he does in us. And I want you to think about this, because I think it's so important for us to remember this. But how many of you guys have children you guys, or grandkids? Do you remember your kids when they were learning how to walk? You know, when they were toddlers, like around like 18 months, two years old or whatever, and what do they do? They, they, they're like little drunk Frankensteins, right? You know, trying to get, you know, trying to walk from one spot to the other, right? And, and, and what happens to them? They fall, right? They fall down. What do you do? Do you like berate them? You good for nothing, no walking child. No. What do you do when they fall? You what? You pick them up. You love them. You encourage them. If they have a boo-boo, you kiss it, right? And then you say what? Keep what? Keep walking. Keep moving. And see, that's Jesus. That's the love of the Father that he has for you and for me because the reality is he knows that you and I are going to fall. We're going to fail. We're going to mess up. We are imperfect. But remember this. God loves you. He loves you so much. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, for us. And I want us to walk away from this knowing that and getting that, internalizing that, that it's not about performance. This is such a struggle for, for me in particular because I don't know about you, but I grew up in that kind of context where I, I grew up in a Christian religious home and, it, and a lot of times it felt like I had to do all these things to measure up. Anyone can relate to that? And it wasn't until I was in college, until I really understood grace and God's love that I felt the pressure be relieved. And that's what I hope and pray that all of you feel and understand. Because 1 John 4, 8 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out, drives out all fear. And what does John say in verse 16? God is love. See, that is ultimately the, the big idea that God is love. He flows through that love into us. He wants us to love others. And that's my last point. All of us get to do this. We get to love God and love people. We get to love God and love people. So I'm going to encourage you. Right now, we're coming down the home stretch, right? To Chris How many days till Christmas? Somebody knows already. You guys probably have a little countdown on your walls, right? We're almost, we're getting there, right? We're about a month away. During this season, I'm going to challenge you to love God, love people. Matthew 12, 30, 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. I'm going to encourage the band to come forward and load right now. And I want to take just a moment to, to pray for us, to encourage us. And to challenge us to really think about what I talked about this morning. Because ultimately, I believe this is the good news. This is the gospel. This is what we get to share with others. And this is what we also need to walk in so that we don't continuously chase that carrot of perfectionism. Because the reality is we will not get there. We won't.
but we can walk in God's love and walk in his grace. And that's my challenge, and that's my encouragement, and that's my desire for every single one of us. Walk in that grace. Can we do that, church? Can we walk in that love? Can we extend that love and grace and not think, oh, I have to be perfect. My house has to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. No, just walk in that love and grace. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for being this amazing and awesome and loving Father God that we can look to and know that you look down on us and you love us so much. And thank you that your love for us does not change even when we mess up, even when life isn't perfect. God, we thank you that, Lord Jesus, you modeled to us, you showed us what it meant to choose people over perfection, that you loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus and your disciples and the people around you. You loved so freely and so, so graciously. And I pray that all of us would have that same perfect teleos love, that it would grow and that we would grow in our love for others. And it really, it just boils down to this, us loving you, Lord God, so that we can love people. And so I just pray over every single one of us this morning, and I don't know where everyone is, Lord. I think there might be some people here this morning who need to take that first step, that first step of placing their faith in you, Lord Jesus, as their Lord, God, and Savior. I pray that they would do that right now, right now in their hearts, that they would take the pressure off of performance, and they would just say, Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be a follower of you, Lord, for the rest of my life. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and help me walk with you, Lord. And secondly, I think there might be some people here this morning, God, too, who struggle with perfectionism, with performance, with religious duty, with trying to, to keep up and to, to put, and they put up these false fronts, Lord God. And, and God, I just pray that they, too, Lord, would just repent and just come to you and just say, Lord God, forgive me. And help me, help me to walk in your grace. And that the pressure in their lives would be relieved and they would walk in your love as well. So we thank you, Lord God, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Christ's name we pray.